Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I want to show you how you can use Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro to get super smooth and stable shots in your videos. And to help you out and save time, I've created a set of presets that will apply my exact customized Warp Stabilizer settings to your video clips so you can have stable footage without Jello or other weird artifacts. You can download my Warp Stabilizer presets completely for free at the link in the video description, which also happens to be next to the link to this video's sponsor, ArtGrid, but more about them at the end of the video. Welcome to Premiere Pro. Here is a clip that I filmed recently at a wedding, and as you can see whenever I play it back, it has some camera shake. This looks like something Warp Stabilizer can fix, so let's apply it to this clip. To access Warp Stabilizer, make sure you're in the Editing tab, and then go down here in the bottom left to Effects, and search for Warp, and there it is, Warp Stabilizer. Click on it and drag it over to your video clip that you want to stabilize and it will immediately start analyzing in the background. All right, this video clip is stabilized and here's how it looks, pretty stable. And if you've used Warp Stabilizer before, this is where you may say, okay, this clip is stabilized, time to move on and keep editing other clips. But there are actually a ton of settings for the Warp Stabilizer effect that you can change and modify to make this effect work even better. So let's talk about them. First off, I want you to look at how long it took Warp Stabilizer to analyze this clip. I did a little bit of movie magic, but if we delete the Warp Stabilizer effect and then re-add it, as you can see, it's taken a little while. I have a pretty powerful computer, so it's moving pretty quickly, but if you're noticing that Warp Stabilizer is slow, I would make sure that you're running at least Premiere Pro version 15 that was released in March 2021. This update included a speed upgrade for Warp Stabilizer that added this little checkbox here under Advanced that says Fast Analysis. It will be checked by default, and I definitely recommend keeping it checked because it can make the analyzing portion of Warp Stabilizer much faster, especially if you're editing 4K footage. Now, if you're still noticing that Warp Stabilizer is slow to analyze your footage even after updating, one of the best ways that I've found to make it faster is to only apply it to the part of the clip that you need to have stabilized. I've made the mistake before of applying Warp Stabilizer to a several minute long clip, only to realize I only needed five seconds of it. So if you apply Warp Stabilizer to shorter clips, it will have less to analyze and it will be much faster. Let's dig into some settings now. So going over here to Warp Stabilizer in the Effect Controls panel, you'll see here it says Stabilization and underneath it, it says Result and there's a little drop-down menu that says smooth motion or no motion. Smooth motion is what I choose 99% of the time because it will smooth the motion in a shot where the camera's moving. This is great for handheld shots with subtle movement or gimbal shots that you wanna make a bit smoother and remove any of that weird electronic movement that you can get when using a gimbal. Alternatively, no motion is great if you want to completely lock off a shot and make it look like it was shot on a tripod. To be clear, this isn't going to work if you're trying to turn a gimbal shot into a tripod shot, but if you're shooting handheld and trying to hold still, but you're noticing a bit of camera shake, this no motion effect can help remove that. Looking below the smooth and no motion options, you'll see there is an option for smoothness with a default of 50%. If you get one thing from this video, Please pay attention to this part because this smoothness setting here is the most important setting in all of Warp Stabilizer. You may not think it, and as I said earlier, many filmmakers just leave their smoothness to the default 50% and move on, but please do not do that. Okay, so why is this the most important setting and why shouldn't you leave it on 50%? Because this smoothness setting is going to make the biggest difference in the quality of the stabilization that you are getting from Warp Stabilizer. If you've ever experienced Warp Stabilizer turning your video clips into jello where it looks super wobbly, this smoothness setting is most likely the reason why. If you want your footage to look natural with an organic smoothness that people won't even know that you've stabilized, taking the time to dial in this smoothness setting is going to be the most important thing you can do. Got it? I know I'm really excited about smoothness. Here are some simple rules for how I change my smoothness settings. First off, 50% is way too high. 
I think I can count on one hand the amount of times that it actually looked good when stabilizing my footage and didn't introduce any jello. Instead of 50%, the maximum, and I mean the absolute maximum that I would ever set my warp stabilizer to is 20%. Dang, Matt, that sounds pretty low. You haven't seen anything yet. Trust me, 20% is plenty. Now, if you wanna save some time, you can go up here to Warp Stabilizer, right-click on the text here, select Save Preset, and let's name this 20% Warp Stabilizer, who is Matt, and click OK. Now, if you ever wanna access this setting again, you can go down to the Effects panel, hit X here, and click Presets, and there's 20% Warp Stabilizer, who is Matt? Click and drag it over to your clip, and it's applied. Now, 20% is usually where I start. If I'm editing a gimbal shot, and I want it to have a bit smoother, more organic movement, I find that 20% usually looks great. In this test shot, though, 20% adds a bit of a weird ripple whenever I bring the camera back in the other direction. You can really notice it in the chair in the bottom right. It kind of stretches and reappears. Looks a little funky. So if you watch back your clip at 20% and it looks a bit weird with a bit of jello in spots, it's time to drop the smoothness lower. Now you may be thinking, okay, let's try 15% or 10%. Now, I usually drop it to five. I realize that may not sound like much, but trust me, even with that small of an amount of warp stabilizer, it's still doing a lot of work in the background. Let's play this clip now and see how it looks. The movement feels a lot more organic. There's still a little bit of camera shake, but to me, this feels way more natural. Kind of like I had a bigger camera on my shoulder rather than just a small mirrorless camera that I was filming with. Let's go up to the warp stabilizer effect right click on Warp Stabilizer, select Save Preset, and we will do 5% Warp Stabilizer dash who is Matt. Press OK. You can access that easily in the preset menu as well. But all that said, what if your footage still looks weird? What if you still have some jello or maybe it just doesn't feel natural? Time to drop the smoothness again. And we're gonna go all the way down to 1%. Really, Matt, 1%? Let me surprise you even more. The most common amount that I apply warp stabilizer smoothness to my clips is 1%. You may not be aware, but if you've watched any of my wedding films, a significant portion of the clips have warp stabilizer applied at 1% because it makes a subtle difference. When in doubt, 1% Warp Stabilizer can help make your shots look really good. Let's go up here to Warp Stabilizer again. Right click, Save Preset, 1% Warp Stabilizer Who Is Matt, and click OK. Let's play this clip back at 1%. See how it still has that weighty camera movement, but it feels organic? I love how this looks. So we could honestly stop this tutorial right here because 90% of the time when I'm using Warp Stabilizer, I'm just grabbing one of these three presets, slapping it on my clips, and they look great. But I did title this video Warp Stabilizer Explained, and there are a lot of other cool features of Warp Stabilizer that can help you if you have an especially stubborn clip that doesn't want to stabilize. So moving on, let's go down here to Method. And as you can see with the drop-down menu here, by default it is set to Subspace Warp, but it also includes Position, Position Scale Rotation, and Perspective. You can think of these settings as different levels of stabilization, with the most basic being Position, and the most complex being Subspace Warp. What really matters though is that in all of my years of editing, I've never really had any of these options work other than Subspace Warp. You're way better off dropping your smoothness down to 1% before adjusting any of these settings. We'll leave it on Subspace Warp, and down below you'll see there's a checkbox that says Preserve Scale. By default, this is unchecked because Warp Stabilizer usually needs to scale up your video a bit to stabilize it. You can see here that it says Auto Scale 100.8%, meaning that it scaled up this video 0.8%. If I bring the smoothness back up to 20% now, you'll see this Auto Scale changes to 
102.1%. Checking this preserve scale box can help bring down some of that scaling a bit, but I would only check it if you're dealing with your footage being scaled up a lot because it can cause some wonky effects. Now, in addition, if the preserve scale checkbox isn't working and you still aren't happy with how scaled up your video clip is looking, I would click this advanced drop down arrow here. And my goodness, Matt, there are a lot of settings here, aren't there? Don't worry, you can ignore all of these for now. And I only want you to pay attention to the crop less and smooth more setting here. This is pretty self-explanatory. If Premiere Pro is cropping in on your footage too much and scaling it up, click and drag this to the left, all the way down to 1% if you need to. Alternatively, if your footage is still too rough, click and drag to the right, all the way up to 75% or 90%, however far you need to go to make it look good. Your footage will look more cropped, but it'll also be more stable. Of course though, before you mess with scaling, I would first adjust the smoothness percentage that we talked about at the start of this video. This is gonna have a much larger effect than this crop less smooth more setting will. Set this back to default now and uncheck the preserve scale box. Now we have this borders section and under borders it says framing and by default it is set to stabilize crop auto scale but you also have stabilize only, stabilize crop, and stabilize synthesize edges. Similar to method up here where you had options like position, scale, rotation, and perspective, I wouldn't expect great results from stabilize only or stabilize and crop most of the time. You're better off keeping your framing to the default stabilize crop auto scale. That said though, if you're noticing that your clip is scaling up a lot and cropping off too much of the sides, you can go back up to framing and select Stabilize Synthesize Edges. When you choose this option, Premiere will not crop in, but because it still needs to stretch and use the edges of your video clip to stabilize the footage, it will look at video frames before and after the frame you've selected and use them to recreate the borders of your video. It's magic. It's really... AI, not magic, but we'll call it magic. This is really cool, by the way, but it's also very processor intensive, so I wouldn't expect your video to play back smoothly after doing this without rendering. Also, just like anything that's being made in a computer from scratch, there may be some glitches and artifacts in your clip after using synthesized edges, so it may not work for you. If you notice it doesn't look perfect, you can go back down to this advanced subheading, and I want you to pay attention to the synthesis input range, synthesis edge feather, and synthesis edge cropping. Synthesis, love that word. The synthesis input range, seconds, will determine how many seconds before and after each frame that Premiere will look at to synthesize the edges of the clip. By default, it's set to 0.5, which is half a second. But if you have a fast moving clip, you may want to set it to one second. Just be aware that this could potentially make your render times for your video longer because Warp Stabilizer will need to analyze even more of your clip when you export your video. Looking at Synthesis Edge Feather now, by default this says 10, and this can help make the borders of your video look smoother where they meet up with the synthesized edges. Feel free to crank this up to 20 or higher if you need to. Likewise, Synthesis Edge Cropping, let's click this little drop down here, ooh, left, top, right, bottom, you can choose which edges of your video clip you want to crop in. And this can help fix any weird edges that you get from your edges being synthesized. All you have to do is choose which side of your video you want to crop. Let's select the top here and we'll do like 132. And hey, we just cropped the top of this video. But uh-oh, now we have this half cinematic black bar at the top, uh-oh. To fix this, we can go up here to additional scale and let's set uh, 120%. And voila, the black bar is gone and the clip has been scaled up a bit. To undo that crop and scaling. Wrapping up here, we have a few more advanced settings to look at in Warp Stabilizer. First, you'll see a checkbox under advanced that says detailed analysis. If you ever notice that you're getting some weird jello artifacts in your video clip, even though you've lowered the smoothness setting down as low as you want it to go, 
Checking this detailed analysis box will help make Warp Stabilizer analyze your clip even more. This will take significantly longer, but I have noticed that it has helped me when I had some stubborn clips that didn't want to stabilize otherwise. Under detailed analysis, you have fast analysis. And as we already covered, this is a checkbox that can help you speed up the analysis of the video clip. And I would always leave this on. It's on by default and it doesn't mess up anything. So I'm honestly not even sure why Adobe included a checkbox for this. Always leave it on. Never turn it off. Lastly, you have the rolling shutter ripple option, and this is actually really useful. If you're moving your camera really fast back and forth from left to right, maybe you're filming a fast dance scene or a fight scene or something that you want a lot of motion in, this can sometimes result in an effect called rolling shutter, where your footage looks like it has ripples in it. By default, Warp Stabilizer will work to automatically remove some of that. But if you have a really stubborn clip with a lot of rolling shutter, you can set this from automatic reduction to enhanced reduction. This will take longer to render, but it can help reduce or completely remove rolling shutter from your video clips. And with that, those are all of the settings that you need to know for Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro. But I do have one tip for you, which will hopefully help you edit with Warp Stabilizer even faster. I want you to be aware that every time you apply Warp Stabilizer to a video clip, Warp Stabilizer is generating a ton of stabilization data, thousands upon thousands of stabilization points that it uses to stabilize your footage. These stabilization points need to be saved somewhere because they can't be deleted, otherwise you wouldn't have stable footage. Because of this, Adobe saves all of this stabilization data to your Premiere Pro PRPROJ project file, and it can add up quickly. I've had projects that were only a few hundred kilobytes in size suddenly become 50 or more megabytes in size because of all this stabilization data that I created whenever I applied Warp Stabilizer to a lot of my clips. Now, this may not seem like a big deal. Come on. 50 megabytes isn't that big, especially whenever we're talking 4K video files. But this can make a huge difference when it comes time to save your video project. You can literally go from your project saving in less than a second to waiting 30 seconds or a minute for it to save. And this is something that will happen every time you click save or Premiere Pro auto saves your project. It can be incredibly distracting to have to wait this long and can really remove you from a fast editing groove that you may be in. So to keep that from happening, I would wait until you're finished editing to apply Warp Stabilizer to your clips. Make all of your cuts, add all of your other effects, color grade and mix your audio. And then finally, after all of that, apply Warp Stabilizer. This will keep your saves fast right up until the end and keep you editing quickly. Speaking of editing quickly, have you downloaded my Warp Stabilizer presets yet? They're free and linked down below. Also down below is a link to this video's sponsor, ArtGrid. To edit a video, you need video clips, but what do you do if you don't have the clips that you need? Maybe you're filming a wedding and you're behind schedule and you didn't have time to film any establishing shots of the location. This is where ArtGrid comes in. With thousands upon thousands of video clips filmed by many filmmakers around the world, they have the footage that you're missing. Need establishing shots of a beach? What if it's cloudy? Sunset? They've got it. Filming a forest elopement and you need a few more tree shots. Dang, these are some pretty trees. If you can think of it, ArtGrid probably has clips for it and they organize these clips into stories. So if you find yourself liking one clip from a filmmaker, you can also look at more clips in that story from the same filmmaker to use as well. This can save you a ton of time when searching. But let's talk price, because while I'm sure the prospect of having all this footage at your disposal is intriguing, you may have been burned by stock footage in the past, because it's traditionally very expensive and can be hundreds of dollars for even one 4K clip. Let's not even get into what happens when you try to license a clip to use on broadcast TV. It gets expensive quickly. This is one of the big reasons I love ArtGrid though. They've done away with per clip pricing and instead use a subscription model where only $299 per year gives you unlimited access to download as much as you want from their library in HD resolution. If you want 4K, 6K, or 8K resolution footage, it's only $180 more at $479 per year. But 
here's where things get really cool. If you opt for their top $599 per year plan, you get access to raw and log versions of the majority of the clips in their library. You can then color grade these clips so they fit the rest of your footage in your film exactly. And I absolutely love that they give you that level of control. Regardless of what plan you choose, you get unlimited access to download an unlimited amount of clips and use them in any project for any client, even in commercial broadcast work. And if you don't renew your subscription, your license will still be active for clips you've already used, so you never have to worry about copyright. So. If you need footage for really anything, ArtGrid has you covered for an extremely competitive price. And as a bonus for you, if you use my link to ArtGrid down in the video description, you can get two months added to any subscription for free. That's 14 months for the price of 12. Not bad. With that, thank you so much for watching this video about Warp Stabilizer. I hope it has fully explained to you the ins and outs of this awesome effect. It would be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see more videos about Premiere Pro in the future as well. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.